pedigree research, but anyhow, statistical techniques, whether they are used in medical sciences, social sciences, or management sciences, all statistical techniques are similar. Only thing is terminology gets changed. For example, if you are in economics or social sciences, we call that independent and dependent variable. But if you are into medical sciences, they call it response variable and explanatory variables. Otherwise, meaning is the same. Of course, at some point of time, some techniques also differ. But uh, I'll try to cover up the examples from all the disciplines because you are from disciplines, you are from different disciplines, as I came to know from economics, from psychology, from management, statistics also. So that's very good. And if you have any question at any time point, please don't wait till the end of the lecture to ask me. You can interrupt me anytime and then ask questions. Will that be OK? Yes, please. Any participant? Yes, any sir. participant? Yes. Yes, sir. OK, thank you so yes. much. And um, basically, earlier, I was working with the NIH. NIH is called National Institute of Health in US that is close to Washington. That place is called Bethesda. And uh, I worked for quite some time over there, where um, we have learned many of the techniques of uh, genetics. If you, some of you may be from sciences, those who know uh, the human, gen human, human genome project. Human genome project was started in 1990, and it was over in 2003, after 13 years. And there were more than 2,500 scientists who were working with the Human Genome Project. So I got a chance to work with those scientists when I was there in NIH, National Institute of Health in US, in 2014 and 15. So, so far I have written almost 100 and more than 130 research papers in national and international journals. And uh, one of my book is also there on medical statistics, but that is mainly for doctors and also written several chapters in books. So with this be, be brief introduction, uh, I would like to start my talk with some of the basics because you are not from, all of you are not from statistics background. So I'll start from very basics. To carry out any type of research, it is important to understand the nature and types of data. Unless or otherwise you are not familiar with the nature and types of data, it is difficult to carry out any type of research. So let me share the presentation and then I'll start with. Uh, in the meantime, if you have any question you want to ask, you are most welcome, please. Any participant, any question if you have in mind, because I will be joining you on 27th also with one way ANOVA, two way ANOVA, and some other techniques like logistic regression, so repeated ANOVA. So that, to that topic I will cover on 27th, because in between I have to go somewhere. So first lecture and 27th, I will be able to cover. Okay. So if you have any, still have any questions, you can ask me. I'm going to share the screen. Just give me one minute. If anybody want to ask something or any suggestions you want to give, then maybe I can look into. No suggestion? Should I start now? Yes, please. Yes, sir. Yeah. OK. All right. Just let me, can you see my desktop? Yes, sir. Is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. All right. Hopefully the slide is visible. Yes, yes. All right. So this is a national workshops on the use of statistical techniques using SPSS in research and development. So this is the first lecture. And first lecture is always important in the sense because some basics are covered. So I'll try to focus on some basics so that uh, you can understand right from the beginning. And then I'll come up to also the introduction to SPSS, how to enter the data in SPSS, how to import files into SPSS, how to label different kind of variables, how to split file, how to select options, how to draw graphics. So all these things we are going to do, provided you are with me, right? So first, but first um, uh, half an hour will be devoted to the research methodology part because as I mentioned, it will cover some basics of statistics as well as types of data. OK. If you look at the nature and types of data, 
particularly the nature of data, it is basically of two types. Either it is called structured data or it is called unstructured data. Now, what do you mean by structured data? Structured data is the one where features can be easily extracted. For example, if I give you 100 observations, say related to height and weight, and I ask you to compute what is the minimum value, maximum value, what is the mean, median, mod, skewness, kurtosis, right? All these things can be easily computed. And most of the times, the structured data is in the numeric form. But what happens sometimes, the data may not be exactly in the numeric form, but it's easily convertible into numeric form. That also comes under structured data. For example, gender. Now, gender is not numeric as such. It's male and female. But I can always assign certain code, say male as one, female as two. So it becomes numeric. And then go for counting of ones. Counting of one means counting of males. Go for the counting of two. Counting of two means counting of female. So this kind of data, which was in the form of certain labels, but easily convertible into numeric form, also come under structured data. So basically, what is structured data? Either it is already in the numeric form, or it's easily convertible into numeric form. This is what we mean by structured data. Then there is unstructured data. What do you mean by unstructured data? Unstructured data is the one where features are not easy to extract. For example, each one of us, we are using WhatsApp. There are messages, there are videos, pictures. Every day, a lot of information people provide. But if at the end of the day, I ask, I ask you each and every one to convert into numeric form, I don't think it is easy for anyone, right? But information is there. People are talking about something. This kind of data, which is not easily convertible into numeric form, comes under what is called unstructured data. And most of the unstructured data, like if you look at any Facebook media site like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, you can see a lot of information, but that is not numeric. This kind of data comes under what is called unstructured data. It's easier to deal with structured data, very difficult mm -hmm. to deal with unstructured data. And two of my students from statistics and two from bioinformatics, because I also heading the bioinformatics center for almost nine years, systems biology and bioinformatics, they have completed their PhD on unstructured data. If you give us any text, Without reading the text, we can tell you in five minutes what they are talking about. And uh, But that is beyond the scope of this workshop. In this workshop, I'll just focus on structured data. Structured data means which is in the numeric form. And uh, sometimes people also talk about big data. Big data is nothing but some part may be structured and some part may be unstructured. So this is what we mean by big data. But as I mentioned, that in this entire workshop, we'll focus on structured data. And if you look at structured data, it is basically of two types. Either it is called categorical data or it's called measurement data. It's called categorical data or it's called measurement data. Now, what do you mean by categorical data? Already given you one of the example like gender, where the measurements are in terms of categories, like male as one, female as two. Similarly, look at religion. I can write Hindu as one, Muslim as two, Sikh as three, Christian as four. Or you can write Muslim as one, Sikh as two, Hindu as three, in any other order. Doesn't matter. So what do you mean by categorical data? Where the, where the measurements are in terms of categories. Similarly, socioeconomic class can be written as lower class, middle class, upper, upper class as one, two, three. Different colors can be coded. Eye color can be co coded. Skin colors can be coded. So all this kind of data comes under what is categorical data. Then measurement data. What is a measurement data? Measurement data means some kind of instrument is being involved in measuring something. Like you can measure height, weight, blood pressure, cholesterol, skin fold thickness, chest measurement. You require some kind of instrument. But sometimes what happens, we don't require any instrument, but still it could be a measurable quantity. For example, to measure age, we don't require any instrument. But age can be measured in years. Then you can add months days, minutes, and seconds, right? So it, it's a measurable quantity. Temperature is also a measurable quantity. So hopefully the idea about the categorical data and the measurement data is clear. Category means it is simply a label you are defining in terms of one, two, three, four. Measurement data means you are measuring something on a proper scale, right? OK, look at the examples of categorical data. These are examples of categorical data. Hair color could be brown, red, black. 
Now, I didn't put a wide there because people sometimes get depressed. <laughs> so I can write these hair colors as one, two, three. If white is also there, I can write four. Nucleotides, our entire body is made up of four types of bases. They are known as nucleotides. They are known as ATGC. So I can write A as one, T as two, G as three, C as four. Eye color can be coded as one, two, three, four. Gender can be coded as one and two. Disease, mild, moderate, severe, you can write one, two, and three. Genotypes, depending upon which one is dominant, which one is recessive, you can write zero, one, and two. So all this type of data, which was in the certain, in the form of certain labels, is easily convertible into numeric form. This is what we mean by categorical data. All right. Then comes the measurement data, like cholesterol level, height, age, this FPKM value, whenever, whenever we take a fragment of DNA and we put them into an experiment that is called alumina, the entire information comes out in terms of ATGC. And then there is a method to convert that ATGC, which are four nucleotides, into some mathematical expression. And that mathematical expression is basically called FPKM value, which is called frag fragment per kilogram per million. Number of expressed genes, how many genes are expressed for a particular kind of disease, time to complete a homework assignment. So time is also a measurement. So all these are examples of measurement data. And if you look at any kind of measurement data, I, it is basically of two types. Either it is called a discrete measurement or it is sometimes called continuous measurement. Now, what do you mean by discrete measurement data? Discrete measurement means if certain isolated values are present in your data, certain isolated values means it is it may not be a complete, it, it is going to be a complete integer and no fractions. For example, say number of members in a family, number of members in a family may be five members, seven members, nine members. I cannot say number of members in a family is 3.6. It does not make any sense at all, right? Similarly, number of errors in the book, number of students present in the class, it is always going to be some complete integer. So this kind of data, which is likely to take certain isolated values, is called a discrete measurement data. And what is a continuous measurement data? Continuous means it is capable of taking all values within certain specified range. For example, height. If I fix two points, say height between 140 to 145 to 170 centimeter then it is capable of taking all values within this, even decimals. Height could be 157.5, 157.57, 157.578. You can add third, fourth decimals depending upon the accuracy of your instrument. So hopefully the idea about the discrete and continuous measurement is clear to you. OK. Now, so far I discussed that there is a structured and unstructured data we are in this entire workshop we are focusing on structured data and structured data is basically of two types either categorical data or measurements data now i'm coming to very very important slide all these kind of data they are belonging to a particular scale and we our aim is to recognize that scale because statistical analysis entire statistical analysis depends upon the knowledge of these scales so remember, there are two scales for categorical data. I mean, categorical data can be put only in terms of two different scales. One of the scale is called nominal scale. Another is called ordinal scale. Some of you may be having already the idea. Similarly, there are two other scales for measurement data, interval and ratio. And people sometimes get confused between the, these scales. So I'll try to cover. Please remember two scales for categorical data, nominal and ordinal, and two scales for measurement data, interval and ratio. So first of all, let me cover the categorical data scales. Categorical data scales are nominal and ordinal. So categorical data, nominal scale, first of all. A type of categorical data in which objects fall into unordered categories. That means you cannot order them. That this will come first and this will come later. Or you can say there is no preference of one category over the other. So bottom line is, if all the categories are given equal weightage, let me just repeat. If all the categories are given equal weightage, then we say that our data belongs to the nominal scale. For example, religion. Everybody is human being. I can write Muslim as one, Sikh as two, Christian as four, Hindu as four, Hindu as three, and Christian as four. Or you can write Christian as one, Hindu as two, Muslim as three, 
it doesn't matter at all. So if all the categories are given equal weightage, then we say that our data belongs to the nominal scale. Same way is the gender. Everybody is human being. I can write female as one, male as two, or you can write male as one, female as two, does not make any difference. Examples of nominal scale, gender, hair color, where do you live? So all these are examples of nominal scale. Hopefully the idea is clear to you. Then comes again for categorical data, the second scale, which is called ordinal scale. What is the difference between nominal and ordinal? The difference between nominal and ordinal is in case of ordinal scale, you can arrange the categories in order from the lowest to the highest, from the lowest to the highest or highest to the lowest. So one can arrange the categories in ascending or descending order of magnitude. For example, let's say socioeconomic class, lower class, middle class, upper class. Lower means the lower income group, upper means the higher income group. So you can write one, two and three, lower as one, middle as two, upper as three. But you can arrange the categories in order from one to three. One means the lowest, three means the highest, which is not possible in nominal. Similarly, look at education categories, primary school, middle school, high school, graduate, postgraduate and higher. So all these categories can be arranged in order from the lowest education to the highest education, right? So this is what we mean by that's the only difference between nominal and ordinal. In case of nominal, you cannot order. In case of ordinal, that's why the name comes ordinal. That means you can order the categories. Look at the last line. The numerical distance between any two categories does not have any significance at all. Whether you are dealing with the nominal scale or you are dealing with the ordinal scale, the numerical distance between any two categories does not have any meaning at all, no significance. For example, if I'm writing male as one, female as two, subtract two minus one, it doesn't have any meaning at all. Let's say lower class as one, middle class as two, upper class as three. Subtract 3 minus 1 or 3 minus 2. It does not have any significance at all. So remember, sometimes the difference, addition, etc. I mean, mathematical operations have no meaning at all as far as nominal and ordinal scale is concerned. Okay. With this, let's look at the examples of ordinal scale. These are examples of ordinal scale. How do you feel today? By the way, today is the first day of the workshop and you are attending the first lecture. So I can very well imagine how do you feel today? You can rate yourself very unhappy, unhappy, okay, happy, very happy. Yes, please. Any, any respondent, please. Any participants? Where do you rate yourself? Yes, please. How do you feel today? <laughs> yes, please. Very happy. Very happy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So if you are three and above, then there is no problem. If you are below three, then obviously I will not be happy. <laughs> so how do you feel today? The idea here is that you can arrange the categories in order. Similarly, you must have seen questions like strongly disagree to strongly agree. Five point Likert scale. How satisfied are you with our services? Very unsatisfied to very satisfied. Idea here is you can arrange the categories in order from the lowest to the highest. Lowest to the highest. So this is what do you mean by the ordinal scale? That's all about the categorical data. Now we will move on to measurement data scales. The first measurement data scale is called interval scale. Look at the first line, please. People get confused between interval and ratio scale. I'll try to make you clear with many examples. See, in interval scale, mathematical operations sometimes are not valid, not at all right in interval scale examples let's say one student has scored 90 marks in a test another student has scored 30 marks in a test divide 90 by 30 answer will be 3 but i cannot make a statement that the student whose score is 90 is exactly three times the intelligent than the student whose score is 30. you cannot he may be he or she may be intelligence in sports or in some other category some similarly, let's say some beauty contest is going on and there are judges, say, giving score out of 10. Suppose first person gets a score of 8 out of 10 and second one gets a score of only 2 out of 10. If you divide 8 by 2, your answer is 4. 
but I cannot make a statement that the person whose score is eight is four times the intelligent than the student who score than the person whose score is two. I cannot make such type of statement. So, so in some of the interval scale, mathematic operations are not valid. And moreover, in interval scale, zero always has a meaning. Zero does not mean the absence of character. For example, if somebody has scored zero in a test, it does not mean the person is not intelligent at all. Maybe on a particular day, his or her performance is not up to the mark. Next time he or she can score better, right? Similarly, if I say temperature zero, it doesn't mean the temperature is absent. It is still better than minus five or minus six. So zero does not mean the absence of character. So in interval scale, zero means the quantity exists. Please try to listen to me carefully. In interval scale, if there is a zero, that means this quantity exists at this point. That's why in interval scale, zero is known as arbitrary zero. It's not the true zero. True zero means it doesn't exist basically. That's this is what we mean by true zero. But in case of interval scale, zero is an arbitrary zero. Okay. To overcome all such difficulties, there is a highest rating scale, and that is called the ratio scale, where you can divide, you can multiply, all these things are possible. But the only thing which you have to be very careful is about zero. If zero appears in ratio scale, that means the quantity does not exist. Let's say, look at the examples of ratio scale. Let's say one person is having weight 90 kg. Another person is having weight 45 kg. Divide 90 by 45, answer will be 2. But I can always make a statement that the person whose weight is 90 kg is double the weight of the person whose weight is 45 kg. Nothing wrong with that. But if I say, let's say weight 0, it means the quantity does not exist. Generally, we say that the age of the father is three times the age of the son. If son is 15 years, father is 45 years. So 45 divided by 15 is 3. So it's three times. But if I say age 0, that means it doesn't exist. Height zero, it doesn't exist. Weight zero, it doesn't exist. While zero has a meaning in interval scale and zero does not have meaning in ratio scale. You have to be very, very clear. So now how to recognize whether your data belongs to the interval or ratio scale? Look at zero. If zero has a meaning for your variable, it will go to the interval scale. If zero does not have any meaning for your variable, it will go to the ratio scale as simple as that, right? Look at the examples of ratio scale. Examples of ratio scale is already given height, weight, age, etc. They're all examples of ratio scale. Now we are coming to next slide. Summary of different kinds of scales. So at the top, I have written all the four scales, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. And on the left hand side, there are certain parameters. For example, the first one is counting or a frequency. The counting is possible in all the four scales. For example, in nominal scale, I can count how many males and how many females are there. In ordinal scale, you can count how many people belong to the lower class, middle class, upper class, and so on. Similarly, in interval and ratio scale, in interval and ratio scale, uh, you can divide your data into intervals, say 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, and go for counting how many people belong to 10 to 20, how many people belong to 20 to 30, and so on. So counting is possible in all the four skills. But generally, how do we compute median? Median is to be computed when we arrange the data in order. But do you think it is possible to arrange the data in order in nominal scale? No. So that's my median, etc. does not make any sense in nominal scale. But it makes sense in ordinal, interval, and ratio. Because they are in ordinal also, lower, middle, upper, you can, you can arrange the categories in order. In interval also you can do, in ratio also you can do. Height can be arranged from the lowest to the highest. Marks can be arranged from the lowest to the highest. And so it is possible. The order of the values is known, that this will come first, this will come later, only in ordinal interval and ratio. Can quantify the difference. This difference, etc., as I mentioned already, does not make any sense in nominal, not in ordinal. Can add or subtract only in interval and ratio can multiply or divide only under ratio 
have a true zero that means quantity does not exist only under ratio so hopefully the summary of different kind of scales you can recognize the whether your variable belongs to the nominal scale ordinal scale interval scale or the ratio scale why i discuss all these scales because whenever we subject our data for any kind of analysis particularly in spss it will ask you whether your data belongs to which kind of scale and if you don't have clarity about these scales you will face difficulty in the analysis that's why i discussed and here is another important slide sometimes we deal with the same variable and it can be put into different scales same variable can be put into different scales let's look at education as a variable now, education can be measured from different point of view type of education level of education number of years of education now how do you measure education will determine the scale for example if you measure by just a type of education such as private or public some people prefer private some prefer public it is individual choice so education will go to the nominal scale and it same variable can go to the ordinal scale if you measure by the level of education primary school high school college graduate postgraduate so all these are you can arrange the categories in order from the lowest to the highest so same variable education can be put into ordinal scale and if you go to us or any other country they will ask you about the number of years of education five years of education 10 years of education 15 years of education 20 years of education the same variable can be put into interval scale so very very important to understand that how a variable is measured and you have to assign the scale accordingly who cares statistics people definitely have to care because they have to involved with the analysis and from today onwards you will also be if you are involved in phd or in some research so there are different statistical techniques if you are dealing with categorical data for example your questions are yes no yes no type then it's simply a categorical data statistical techniques are going to be different and again the statistical techniques are different if you are only dealing with the measurement data like anthropometric parameters height weight bmi blood pressure cholesterol so all these are measurement data so statistical techniques will again differ and sometimes we have to deal with the mixture of the two some part is categorical and some part is measurable let's look at the examples of let's say somebody is designing a health questionnaire and there are questions which are socioeconomic parameters like education occupation marital status gender etc they're all categorical but there are questions in health which are related to bmi height weight blood pressure etc cholesterol and they are measurements now i want to correlate between the categorical variable and the measure, measurement kind of variable so how to do that ordinary techniques will not work and uh, in the subsequent lectures you will learn all these techniques how to deal with such type of problems okay now when people deal with the categorical type of data when people deal with the categorical type of data they generally compute percentages or proportions if you remember for example we can go for the count what is the percentage of males in our data what is the percentage of females or you can draw bar diagram or pie charts how many people belong to the lower class middle class upper class then i can plot the pie chart that this is the sector where maximum people belong right this is what they generally do generally what we do for categorical type of data but look at the last paragraph in fact one can perform all type of statistical analysis including correlation regression statistical modeling and also variance even for categorical data so different techniques are there different type of correlations are there tetra correlation bicell correlation point bicell correlation matthews correlation gamma coefficient coefficient of uncertainty biserial correlation all these correlations are meant whenever we deal with the categorical type of data and there are different regression techniques also like one of the regression technique i'll cover on 27th that is called binary or logistic regression that i'll cover and you will come to know we can take care of the categorical data there different kind of statistical modeling techniques are possible clustering techniques are possible and also variance techniques are possible even for categorical data 
and when people deal with the measurement kind of data, a lot of choices. They can compute mean, standard deviation, minimum value, maximum value, all other things, right? And for continuous type of data, we always draw histogram or box plot. But for discrete type of data like male, female, we always draw bar diagram or pie chart. Please remember bar diagram, pie chart, they are only meant for categorical data, not for continuous data like height and weight. For height and weight, you are going to draw histogram or a box plot, which I'll discuss today itself in the second lecture. Look at the last paragraph. In fact, one can perform all type of parametric and non-parametric procedures on the measurement kind of data depending upon the assumptions. So what are these parametric and non-parametric procedures? You will learn in your subsequent lectures, right? If your data satisfied certain set of assumptions, then we go for the parametric test. If it doesn't satisfy the set of assumptions, then we go for the non-parametric test. What are these assumptions? Basically, assumption of normality, independence, etc. And that we'll discuss. Don't worry at all. Okay. Now, if you have any question up to this, yes, please. If you have any question you want to ask up to this, you are most welcome, please. Yes, please. Any participants want to ask these questions? Before I move on to now, little bit of descriptive part. Yes, please. Any participant want to ask something? Yes, please. You can unmute yourself and ask, please. Uh, good Sister. afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, yes, sir, please. you have told uh, in the one of the slides written that we can use any of the statistical analysis while using categorical data. Since I'm working on the categorical data, I'm stuck with the kind of analysis that I'll be able to do. So will you uh, mention it later, ki how we can perform every kind of analysis using categorical data? Yes, yes, you will. we'll come across. We'll come across certain techniques, of course, because I am taking only two lectures. So uh, other other people will also cover, other source person. But if you have any, any question or any query, you can personally also ask me if there is okay. a categorical data, I will tell you. And I'll give you some reference of the books also where you can study some of the important techniques. Are you from statistics or mathematics or from other disciplines? Yes, I'm from stats. And my main field is economics. So I have read stats also and uh, econometrics also. So, But right now, the data that I'm that I'm working on is actually categorical in nature. And I'm, and I'm stuck there uh, while uh, doing the analysis part. Since uh, I will help you. Don't worry at all. I will help you. Don't worry. OK, sure. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you so much. Any other question? I think your name is Mohini, right? Yes, I'm Mukta Mohini. Mohini. Mukta Mohini, yes. Anybody else? Yes, please. Yes, please. So should I move forward now? No answer. Should I move forward? Yes, doctor, yes. yes sir. OK, all right. So we discussed a little bit here about certain basics. Now let's move on to descriptive statistics. Because if you're using computer and you don't know what is the keyboard, what is the screen or a printer or a mouse or a pen drive, then obviously some things are difficult to understand. Similarly, in statistics, you should know what is skewness, what is kurtosis, what is the actual meaning of that? What is variance? Why do we compute standard deviation? All these things are important. So in, in next 15 minutes, I'll try to cover all this because I'll not give you any formula. Our aim is to learn SPSS and that uh, will we'll go through. Don't worry at all. But first of all, certain basics of statistics and where to use them. That is more important. I will not give you any formula. Only some important points will I'll, I'll tell you where to use which kind of measure. Why it is called descriptive statistics? Because you, you have to describe the features of the data. That's why the name comes in descriptive. For example, if I give you a basket, let's say this basket had 100 oranges 
and I ask you to say something on this oranges. Comment upon something. So somebody can look at the shape and size. Somebody can say some are a small size, some are a bigger size, some are in between middle size. Somebody can also look at the different colors. They'll say some are more yellow, some are green color, some are in between. What you are trying to do basically, you are trying to describe the features of oranges. Hopefully you will agree with me, right? But these are just 100 oranges. Suppose I give you 500 observations. Suppose I give you 5,000 observations. Suppose I give you 50,000 observations. Now, can I describe like that? It's not possible. That's why we look at mathematics or statistical measures. And here comes the role of certain important measures like mean, median, mod. So the commonest measure of which will give you some idea about the distribution of the observation in the central part is called location or central tendency. Measures of central tendency or location. And there are three measures of central tendency. One is called mean, another is called median, another is called mod. Now, how do we compute mean? We add all the observations, divide by the number of observations, you will get mean. But let me give you a very simple exercise. Let's say population data is available to me from 1981 to 1990. Each year's population is given to me. 1981 population, 1982 population, and 1990 population. All the population figures are given. All right. Now, my question is how to compute mean? You add all the 10 values divided by 10. Very simple. Now, here is a problem. Let's say 88. 1988 population is there is a question mark the population is not available that population is not available now i ask you to compute mean now there are only nine observations but i need a mean of 10 observations can you compute that yes please any any respondent please nine observations are available but i am asking you to compute mean of 10 88 1988 population is missing can i compute mean Yes, please. There is a question mark. Anybody? Hello? Aap mein se koi aisa hai jo ek mic apna on rakh sakta hai so that if I am asking questions, you can respond, please. Sir, class, sir, class, sir, Any sir, participant? Sir, sir, class sir, interval sir, karke sir, kya karenge? Sir, class sir, interval karke kya hoga? Bataiye. Usme to aapke paas in 1988 ki population hai. Aapka na mic thik nahi hai. Anybody else, please? Anybody else? Hello? Any participants, please? Bhai, ghabraiye mat. Itna mushkil question nahi hai. Nahi aata to mein answer kar dunga. Sir, orange man, bolhi sir. Mera question ye tha, ke if some observations are missing, and I can I compute mean if some observations are missing? That's a question. No, sir. Then, then there is a problem, right? So yes, this is what I, what I, I was asking you that mean, although it's very simple to compute, but if certain observations are missing, it, it becomes difficult to compute mean. Hopefully you will agree with me, right? Yes, yes. That's why we come to me. That's why we come to median. That's why median becomes important. Let's look at the, again, the data, which was from 90 population data, 1981 to 1990, the data is given to you. Okay. Now, even 98. 1998 population there is a question mark it is not available but i know that population is always increasing particularly india in india it will never decrease so i can assume that 88 population will be higher than 87 87 will be higher than 86 and so on so i can arrange the categories in order if you arrange the categories in order even there is a question mark as 1988 what will be the value of the median median will be the value which is corresponding to 1985 so you can compute median or the middle of the two because there are 10 observations. So middle of the two, 1986 and 85, take the middle of the two. That will give you the value of the median. So median can be computed, but not mean, right? So that's why there is an importance of median. Similarly, median mean is difficult to compute or mean does not make any sense if there are outliers present in your data. What do you mean by outliers? 
outliers are the observations which are away from the main body of the data. They are known as outliers. For example, let's say, say I, I give you this example. Suppose most of the observations, they are between 120, between 120 to 140. Let's say if all the observations are between 120 to 140, that means some observations are 122, some 125, 139, 140, but between 120 to 140. What do you think? Where will be the mean? Mean will also certainly lie between 120 to 140. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Now, yeah, yeah. Please, please keep your mic on so that uh, I think your mic is absolutely okay. Now, if let's say I there is one observation which is 270. All the observations are between 120 to 140, but one observation is 270. Now I include this observation also into computation of mean. And because of this, your entire mean may shift to 170. You follow my point? Because of one observation. While most of the while most of the observations, they are between 120 to 140. And you are getting the answer as 170. Do you think it's it will give you a right representation? Yes or no? No, sir. No. 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 So that means mean does not make any sense if there are outliers present in the data. But look at the median. How do we compute median? We arrange the data in order. Now again, arrange the data in order. Even if there is an observation like 270, but median will certainly lie between 120 to 140. So median will give you more representative value rather than mean. Hopefully you will agree with me. Yes? Yes, sir. So that's why there is a need to compute median to understand where median is applicable, where mean is applicable. And what about mod? Mod is the value which occurs most frequently among the set of observations, most frequently. For example, look at, look at this example. There is a data, first series data, 1545557352. Which value is occurring most of the times here? Five. Yes, please. Five. So five. mod will be five. But look at the definition, please. Very important. The most frequently occurring value among the observations is called mod. Look at second series data. One, five, four, seven, 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 triple five, seven. So here, if you check carefully or you read the observations carefully, five is occurring five times and seven is also occurring five times, right? Now, if I ask, although answer is given, but if I ask somebody, what is the value of mod? What they generally do, 5 plus 7 divided by 2, they give the answer as 6. But look at the definition, the most frequently occurring value. 6 doesn't, doesn't appear even in the data. So that means 6 cannot be mod. So in this data, there are two mods basically. Because if you go through the definition, the most frequently occurring values. There are two most frequently occurring values, 5 and 7. So both these values will be considered as mod. Remember, mean value is always 1. Median value is always 1. But mod may not be unique. There may be two mods. If there are two mods in your data, then it is called a bimodal distribution. If there are three mods in your data, then this is called trimodal distribution. Right? And, and 3 and above. All these are known as basically multi-model distributions. They are known as multi-model distributions. Look at the series 3 data. 2, 3, 5, 4, 6, 7, 9, 10, 12, and 1. Now, no value is repeated. If I ask you a question, what is the value of mod? Somebody can answer that all the values you can consider as mod. But look at the definition. There is no most frequently occurring value. That means your answer is mod does not exist that is the correct answer right so mean exist median exist but mod may not even exist and there may be two mods three mods in your data hopefully you understand what i'm saying is that okay yes sir. yes please is that important yes 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 sir. okay all right yes yes sir now once we know once we know mean median mod see these are important basics because Interpretation is very, very important. And you should be very much clear where to use, for example, 
where to apply parametric, non-parametric test, then you will come across all these things. If you, if you are listening to me carefully. Now, once we know mean, median, mod, why to look at dispersion then? Dispersion basically means scatteredness, how the observations are far away from each other. This is what do we mean by dispersion. I'll take you a very simple example to explain you dispersion. Look at series one data and series two data. Look at series one and series two data. Now, in series one data, there are five observations, one, five, nine, 13, and 17. In series two, again, there are five observations, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11. If you add the series one data, of sum is 45. Add series two data, sum is again 45. Number of observations, five in series one, five in series two. What is the mean? Mean is nothing but sum divided by the number. So 45 divided by five will be nine in the first series and nine in the second series. Both the series are having mean as nine. Now, here is an important question which I, I would like to ask from you. Suppose I will not show you the data. I will not show you the data. My simple question is, if mean of five observation is nine, if mean of five observations is nine, now can you make out whether it is a mean of series one or series two? Yes, please. Can you, is it possible to make out no. if I don't show you the data? No, sir. It is not. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. That no, means, sir. what does this mean? What does this mean? This means that mean is not describing your data completely. There is something missing, right? Two series can have the same mean. There is something missing. And that missing part is basically called dispersion or the variation or the variability. Now look at series one data. Series one data varies from one to 17. Series two data values are quite apart from each other. What about series two? Very, very close. Seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11. Very, very close. So if you see from your eye, you can easily see that series two is having consistent observations, very close observations while series one observations are far away from each other. That means, what does this mean? It, this means that series one is having more dispersion or more variation as compared to series two. Yes or no? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. OK. Now, here is the important question. These are only five observations you can make out from your eye only. But suppose I give you 500 or 5,000 observations. Now, do you think it will be easier to make out which yes. series is having more dispersion or less dispersion? No, yes or no? No. no? no. That's why that's why we look at some statistical measures. That's why it becomes important. Right? Now, the simplest statistical measure is to go for a range. So Just look. What is the range? The difference between highest and lowest value. So range in the first case will be 17 minus 1, 16. Range in the second case will be 11 minus 7. Four, right? But yes. range is not a very good measure of dispersion. Range is not a very good measure of dispersion. What is the better measures of dispersion? Better measures of dispersion. There are other measures like quartile deviation, mean deviation, etc. Many. But what is the best measure of dispersion is, is either called variance or under root of variance is called standard deviation. These are known as the best measures of dispersion. Now, if you go through my previous example, where I given you example that most of the observations, they are between 120 to 140. If all the observations are between 120 to 140, what will be your range? 140 minus 120, your range will be just 20. But you include that 270 observation also into computation of range now. So 270 minus 120, which is the lowest. Now your range is going at 150. Do you think range is going you range is giving you the right representation? Not at all. Yeah. So range is not a very good measure of dispersion. The best measure of dispersion is either called variance or standard deviation. Now, why why they are known as best measures of dispersion? Why they are known as best measures of dispersion? And they are in mathematical form. So I'll give you a logic behind this, and then you will come to know that whatever you have learned in your 10th standard and 11th standard so far. You just able to cram the formula that this is a formula for variance. We will compute this value. You will get variance, right? But I, today I'll give you a logic behind variance. Okay. I'm again considering the same data. You are already aware of one, five, nine, thirteen, seventeen. Series two data seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. 
here the sum is 45 here the sum is again 45 five number of observation mean is nine in both the cases already familiar with right same data now please those who are not from statistics there is certain notation in statistics mean is denoted by this symbol which is called x bar x bar is called mean and any observation is denoted by xi any observation is denoted by xi xi means ith observation for example if you look at series one data put i is equal to one so my x1 will be one x2 will be five x3 will be nine then x4 13 x5 17. similarly for series two data your x1 will be seven x2 will be eight and so on and mean is nine hopefully you are now understand the notation let's do a very simple exercise very simple exercise all these xi's are available to you and x bar is also available to you let's do very simple exercise i subtract xi minus x bar that mean i subtract mean i'll tell you the reason i subtract mean from each observation so first will be one minus nine minus eight then five minus nine minus four then nine minus nine zero 13 minus 9, 4, 17 minus 9, 8. Yes, yes, please. Is this clear? The difference xi minus x bar? Hello. Yes. Sir. Now look yes. at series series 2 also. Look at series 2 also. 7 minus 9, minus 2, next will be minus 1, then 0, 1 and 2. Now, if you look at these differences, if you look at these differences, the 0 is there in the center. 0 is there in the center. And if you look at the range of this difference, this varies from minus 8 to plus 8, and this varies from minus 2 to plus 2. And graphically, they will look like this that series 2 is from minus 2 to plus 2, and but series 1 is from minus 8 to plus 8. Yes, please. Can you look at this graph? Yes. Hello. Yes, sir. Now, yes. now here, yes. here immediately you can see 0 is there in the center of the both. And one thing is clear, it's easier to compare in terms of zero if your values are closer to the zero dispersion is less if your values are far away from zero dispersion is more yes or no yes sir. right but some people from from social sciences medical sciences they are afraid of negative sign our data was positive how come how come it has come negative now then these statistics people are very smart now how to get rid of the negative sign you square the any quantity, you will it will become positive. Yes or no? Right? Correct. So yes. let, let me yes, do uh, let me square this difference. If you square all the differences next time, let's say xi minus x bar square. So minus 8 square will be 64, minus 4 square will be 16, 0, 16, and 64. Same thing you can do it for series 2. So this is minus 2 square will be 4, minus 1 square 1, 0, 1, and 4. Yes, please. Is that okay? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Sir. Now nothing has come out. I'm just getting rid, getting rid of the negative sign. I'm just telling you the logic behind variance. Just try to understand, please. Now let's go one step ahead. Suppose I take the sum, sum of these squares. Sum in statistics is denoted by this symbol, which is called summation. We call this symbol as summation. And there are five observations: i going from one to five, x i minus x bar square. Sum means addition of this. Sum means addition of this. So if you add 64 plus 64, 128, plus 16, 144, plus 16, 160. So this sum is coming out to be 160. What about series 2? 4 plus 4, 8, plus 9 plus 10. This is coming out to be 10. Now, if you compare this, this sum and this sum, you are arriving at some mathematical formula that where this sum is high, the dispersion is more because in series one, the dispersion is more. Where the sum is less, the dispersion is less. Yes or no? Yes, please. Yes. Hello? Yes. yes. Sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But listen to me carefully. These are just five observations. So maybe this sum you can compare. But let's say in series one, there are, let's say in a, in a school, there are two sections. Section A is having 100 students. Section B is having 50 students. And there are marks are given. So obviously, if I compute this 
difference and square those differences where there are 100 students thus this sum will be likely to be more where there are 50 students sum will be less yes or no yes sir. so i cannot compare i cannot compare yes. you cannot compare the sum that's why we divide this sum by n n means dividing taking average now if let's say in a section there are 100 students i add the marks of all the 100 students divide by 100 you will get average similarly in other section there are 50 students i'll add all the 50 but here you have to divide by 50 and you will see averages will almost be same averages will almost be same so that's why we divide this sum by n if you divide this sum by n you will get the formula as 1 by n summation of xi minus x bar square so 160 divided by 5 will be 32 here 10 because total is 10 10 divided by 5 will be 2 now you are arriving for a mathematical formula and this formula which we have learned in our 10th or 11th standard is known as formula to compute variance yes or no yes sir right but today the logic is clear why this formula is there right yes, let's sir. let me give you why this is considered to be best formula suppose all the values are five 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 all the five values are five 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 if all the values are five can you tell me what will be the mean yes five. please five five so if you take the difference five minus five five minus five five minus five five times and square zero so what will be the variance variance will come out to be zero zero, zero. so what do you what do you mean by this that means there is no variation because all the values are same so there is no variation so its value will come out to be zero so it's a correct correct answer and if more and more variation will be there then you will get high and high value of variance yes or no yes so that's why we look at this formula to compute variance okay and this formula you you have learned in your 10th standard and that is called the formula to compute variance or dispersion now here the power is 2 that means we have computed the square and in statistics you have taken the difference take the power 2 then variance is basically because this power is 2 we write this as m2 m2 stands for second order movement m2 stands for second order movement mm -hmm. okay same way if i raise this power 3 that means instead of two times i multiply xi minus x bar into xi minus x bar again into xi minus x bar three times i will get this value as m3 and that is called third order movement similarly if i raise this power 4 you will get m4 that is called fourth order movement so you now you have the second order movement you can also compute the third order movement you can also compute the fourth order movement and these movements which are known as m2 m3 and m4 they are helpful to compute some other measures like skewness and kurtosis which i'll discuss but try to remember what is the meaning of m3 raise this power 3 you will get m3 raise this power 4 you will get m4 now once we know the variance then why to compute standard deviation standard deviation is nothing but under root of variance why why we compute question is why do we compute let me give you the logic again again there is a logic let's say i am dealing with height data and height is given in centimeters i compute the mean how do we compute mean all the values of given in centimeters add divide by 5 5 is just a constant so your answer will be in centimeter only so your mean will be having units as centimeter yes yes or no yes please yes sir. Yes, sir. yes sir but look at the units of variance units of variance is differences will also be centimeter because mean is centimeter any observation is centimeter difference will also be centimeter and the centimeter square will be centimeter square so what will be units of variance units of variance will be centimeter square do you agree with me yes sir yes sir. now if i want to add mean plus minus variance can i do that because mean is centimeter variance is centimeter square can you add two different units no that's why we compute take the under root of variance but if you take the under root of centimeter square you will come out with centimeter again yes or no yes yes sir. so that's why we compute standard deviation we compute the standard deviation by taking under root of variance so that 
mean and standard deviation they have the same unit and i can add and subtract mean plus variance mean minus variance generally we require this in testing right so we always do that but i cannot do mean plus minus variance that is the logic of computing this standard deviation both variance and standard deviation they are measures of dispersion right but if i want to do further calculation then standard deviation is more important as compared to variance okay sometimes we also compute coefficient of variation now what do you mean by coefficient of variation coefficient of variation is to be computed whenever we want to compare series which are measured in different units for example let's say one variable is concerning with height height is given in centimeters okay another variable is concerning with weight and weight is given in kilograms kg and somebody asked me this question whether height is having more variation or weight is having more variation now here is an important important question to observe height is increased up to certain age maybe up to 22 years or 23 years not after that mm -hmm. after that only weight will increase <laughs> right? right weight may be 80 kg to 90 kg to 120 pounds and so on right it could be 45 also so that means there could be a variation in weight but hardly any variation in height after a certain period now somebody is asking me this question whether height is having more variation or weight is having more variation but my data is relating to only the children between 10 years to 20 years or 20 22 years Obviously, there will be high variation in height, variation in weight. Now, even if, if I even if I compute standard deviation, one of the standard deviation will be in centimeter. Another standard deviation for weight will be in kg. Can you compare them? Kg no. versus centimeter? You no. cannot. No. That's why we compute coefficient of variation. I what I what I'll do? I'll take I'll compute the standard deviation of height and also the mean of height. Let's say they are in centimeter and divide standard deviation divided by mean. So units will get cancelled because both of them are in the same units. So unit will get cancelled. Cancel. Multiply by 100 will give you percentage. Let's say sigma divided by x bar multiply by 100. For height, it is suppose it is coming, value is coming out to be 17%. Okay. Now it is free from units. Same thing I can do it for weight. For weight, I compute the standard deviation of weight. Mean of weight, divide units will be can get cancelled. Multiply by 100. Suppose this is coming out to be 37%. So that means the variation in terms of percentage in height is 17%, but in weight is 37%. You can compare because it is free from units. So I can say weight is having more variation as compared to height. Yes or no? Yes, sir. So that's why we compute coefficient of variation yes. okay that is the reason hopefully you are understanding all these concepts yes please yes sir yes. So, doctor, yes, sir, could you please explain standard deviation once again please standard deviation is nothing but under root of variance why we compute standard deviation because if you look at the units of variance it is a square now if i say you are you, your xi is concerning with kilogram weight is in kilogram then mean will also be kilogram right that's so it. kilogram minus kilogram will be kilogram so mm -hmm. kilogram square will be kilogram square so vary units of variance will be kilogram square so if i want mean is always kilogram if i want to add mean plus variance or mean minus variance i cannot do that because one is kilogram another is kilogram square that's why we compute standard deviation if I take the under root of kilogram square, you will be back to kilogram. So mean plus standard deviation, mean minus standard deviation, you can easily do. Yes or no? Yes, please. Yes. Yes, so that is the reason why we compute standard deviation. Oh, oh, hopefully, all these things are clear. Yes. Now, median divides the data into two equal parts. If so certain data is given to me, right? Now, let's say one rod is given to me. People ask me, you have to divide this into two equal parts. Where the cut will appear? Cut will appear exactly at the median. 
Yes or no? Yes. Right? Now, similarly, quartiles. Quartiles divide the data into four equal parts. And if you look at deciles, deciles that divide, divide the data into 10 equal parts. Percentiles divide the data into 100 equal parts. 100. Okay. So these are just called different divisions of the data. Now, the last part before I start with SPSS, skewness and kurtosis. Skewness and kurtosis. Now you remember moments. You remember second order moment, third order moment, fourth order moment. And they will be used to compute skewness and kurtosis. Now, what do you mean by skewness, basically? Skewness means lack of symmetry. Lack of symmetry. That means the data is not symmetrical. What is the meaning of symmetry? Everybody knows how to draw histogram. We used to draw in 10th standard, 11th standard, and 12th standard, if you remember. How we draw histogram? We divide the data into small, small intervals, say 10 to 20 years of age group, 20 to 30 years of age group, 30 to 40 years of age group, 40 to 50, and 50 to 60. And then go for the counting. How many people belong to 10 to 20 years? How many people belong to 25, 20 to 30 years? How many belong to 50 to 60 years? And then we usually construct the rectangles where height is proportional to the given frequency. And let's say your one bar is here of the histogram in the center. And there are three bars on the left hand side and three bars on the right hand side. And if you draw a curve, curve will look like this. And if you drop a line from the center, if you drop a line from the center, approximately area on the left hand side will be same as area on the right hand side. Yes or no? If you drop a line from the center here, the first picture, first figure, if you drop a line from the center, area on the left and right, they are approximately same. Yes or no? Yes, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So this means your data is symmetrical. Your data is symmetrical. If area on the left and right is same, we say that data is symmetrical. And if the data is symmetrical, then there is no skewness. It's skewness free because skewness measures the lack of symmetry. So if it is symmetrical, so there is no skewness at all. Right. But look at the, let's say you, you look at the picture of your histogram. You look at the picture of your histogram. Right. If you look at the picture of the histogram, let's say one bar is here then two bars on the left hand side and there are eight and nine bars on the right hand side and if you draw a curve curve will look like this curve will look like this now if you drop a line from the highest point area on the left hand side is less but right hand side becomes more if this is the case that right hand area is more in a curve then we say that your data is positively skewed then we say that your data is positively skewed and if it is other way around, if you drop a line here, third picture, third figure, area on the right hand side is less now, but area on the left hand side becomes more. If this is the case, then we say that your data is negatively skewed. Obviously, to measure skewness, we need some mathematical measure. And how do we compute this? And that mathematical measure is called beta 1. How do we compute beta 1? It is basically based on moments. So here is the formula to compute beta 1. I, I can compute M3, third order moment. Second order moment is nothing but variance. That can be computed for any data. Then you take the ratio. Square this M3 square and take the cube of this M2. So powers will be 6. They will get cancelled. And you will get a number beta 1. Take the under root of that quantity, you will get beta 1. And beta 1, because M3 could be negative, it could be positive. Then how to assign a sign to beta 1? Sign of beta 1, please listen to me carefully. Because in under root, if you take, under root is always positive. Why? Because M3 could be negative. But once you square M3, it will always be positive. Variance can never be negative. It's already square. So these two quantities, they can never be negative. So your under root will always come out to be positive. But here I have written plus and minus. That means you can assign positive or minus sign depending upon. What is the depending upon factor? Depending upon the sign of M3. Because odd power could be negative, it could be positive also. If sign of M3 is negative, 
if sign of m3 is negative you assign negative sign in front of this value and if the sign of m3 is positive you assign positive sign so if you assign that particular sign beta 1 could be 0 for example if m3 is 0 third order moment is 0 then everything will be 0 your beta 1 will be 0 let's say your m3 is positive then you will get value of beta 1 as positive if m3 is negative Again, you will get a positive value, but you have to assign negative sign because M3 was negative. So sign of M3 depends upon the sign. A sign of beta 1 depends upon the sign of M3. So that means your sign could be positive, your sign could be negative, or it could be 0. If it is 0, then the curve is symmetrical. If it is positive, positively skewed. If it is negative, negatively skewed. As simple as that. Yes, please. Any question in skewness? Is this okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Now the last part is called kurtosis. Last part is called kurtosis. And then we will move on to SPSS. What do you mean by kurtosis? There are three figures here. Look at figure one, figure two, figure three. Now, if you drop a line from the center in the figure one, area on the left and right, they are same. Hopefully, you will agree with me. Then, second picture, drop a line from the center. Area on the left and right, they are same. Again, almost. Again, the third picture, drop a line from the center. Areas on the left and right, they are again same. So, in all the three pictures, on all the three figures, there is no skewness. But shapes are different. This is having high peak. This is having flatter peak. This is in between the two. That means skewness will not serve the purpose again. Just like mean cannot describe your data, you need median, you need mod. Same way, skewness may have certain problems. You need to look at kurtosis also. That means how your curve is having high peak or a flatter peak or in between. So, for that purpose, we compute another measure. And that is called beta 2. How we compute beta 2? The fourth order moment, M4, divided by the square of the second order moment, that we already know, minus 3. If you do this calculation, you will come out with the value of beta 2. Beta 2 could be 0, it could be positive value, or it could be negative value. Three options are there. If beta 2 is coming out to be 0, then we say that your curve is neither peaked nor flatter and this type of curve is called mesocurtic curve or sometimes people also called normal curve mesocurtic or normal curve okay so if beta 2 is 0 then your curve is mesocurtic all right if value of beta 2 is greater than 0 let's say it is positive 2 point something then we say that your Curve is leptocurtic. Positive means it's leptocurtic. Lepto means having high peak than the normal. We always compare with normal. High peak than the normal. And if value of beta 2 is negative, if value of beta 2 is negative, then in that case, if value of beta 2 is negative, then in that case, we say that your curve is flatter than the normal. And flatter curve is called platycurtic. Flatter curve is called platycurtic okay so to further measure whether your curve is platycurtic mesocurtic or leptocurtic we have to compute the value of beta 2 now why we need skewness and kurtosis skewness and kurtosis will help you to take a decision whether you have to apply parametric test or we have to apply non parametric test very very important concept parametric and non parametric concepts so roughly, if your skewness and kurtosis values are between minus 2 to plus 2, that means beta 1 is between minus 2 to plus 2, beta 2 is also between minus 2 to plus 2, then your data is approximately normal. But if they are below, below minus 2 or above plus 2, data may not be normal. Okay. So that's why they will help you to take a decision whether we have to apply parametric test or we have to apply known parametric test. So with this, the first part is over. They all 
research methodology part then certain basics of statistics if you have any doubt any question you are most welcome to ask please yes please any question you want to ask whatever i have explained you any question if you have please ask me yes please uh, so right yes. now you said that for skewness and kurtosis so sorry sir for if the value of skewness and kurtosis is between minus 2 and plus 2 does roughly, that roughly. indicate that, that is the rule of thumb roughly so, sir, then that indicates that the data is normally distributed. Approximately, distributed approximately ones. normally distributed, provided you have sufficient number of observations. It should not be that you have oh, only right. five or six number of observations, five, six observations, and then you compute and say data is normal. Not that. Let's say you are having 100, 200 observations. You compute skewness as well as kurtosis. If their values lies between minus 2 to plus 2, yes, approximately your data is normally distributed. This is what it means. And so I just want to, I had another question that when we were computing uh, beta one, mm -hmm. so you said that you spoke about the positive and negative sign of beta one. It depended on moment three. Moment three, yes, because third order moment could be negative. It could be positive also. Right, sir, because we are x, x i minus x bar. We are doing it to the power three. So yes. if this is negative, then the moment sign negative sign. is negative. Hmm. Alright. Yes. This is what. Yeah. Right. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Any other question? Any other question? No other question? No, sir. Very nice. Let's do a small exercise. <laughs> OK, let me open the PPT. So we have covered many sub certain basics. And here is an exercise to you. There is a line A, there is a line B. मुझे ये बताएं आप हिंदी समझते हैं सब लोग के नहीं कोई ऐसा है जिसको हिंदी नहीं आती है कोई साउथ से तो नहीं है यस प्लीज नहीं सर साउथ से है कोई ऐसा जिसको को आप बता दीजिए जिसको हिंदी समझ नहीं आती है प्लीज आई कैन एक्सप्लेन एवरीथिंग इन इंग्लिश आल्सो कोई ऐसा तो नहीं है जिसको हिंदी नहीं आता है सर दो तीन आदमी हैं सर हां आंकर यही ना इसीलिए पूछा मैंने Okay, so I'll not speak now in Hindi if there are two other people. There is a line A and there is line B. Now, any participants, please answer which, if you see from your eye, which line looks smaller, line A or line B? Yes, please. Hello? A looks smaller. A looks smaller, a looks smaller, a than, looks smaller than, B. than B. Absolutely right. A looks smaller than B. Now, let's test our knowledge. Both are equal. Let's see. This is A, this is B. Your answer is correct. Both are equal. But when we see from here, A is smaller and B looks bigger. What is the Bigger reason? Illusion. Yeah. Yeah. I am I'm, I'm giving you some other explanation. Please listen to me. See, if you look at line A, it is closed from both sides. Yes or no? Hello? Yes. yes. yes and if yes. you look at line B, it is open from both sides. Yes or no? Yes. Sir. Right. So right. that means what I'm trying to say. If you are listening to me with closed mind, you are looking at line A. If you are listening to me with open mind, basically it's the same thing, but you are looking at line B. Is that make sense? <laughs> right? So that right. is the idea of showing you this picture. All right. And here is another test for you. What is this? Is this 13? Is it B or is it 1 and 3? Yes, please. 1 and 3, sir. 1 and 3. Okay. Anybody else? 1 so and, three. One and, one three. and one three. 1 and 3. Okay. Very good. Let's, let's test your knowledge also. Now, what is this? <laughs> Yes, yes, this is so somebody was looking at 13, somebody was saying one and three. But there is if you have a clear cut picture, you can recognize what it is actually. So this is A, B, C basically. What I'm trying to say, my answer here is your environment will determine your true value, where you stand, right? Where you stand, your environment. If you are working with a positive environment. You are at the right place with the right people, your worth will be million. And if you are having wrong society, wrong people, 
obviously you will not be able to learn anything you are isolated value people even don't recognize whether you let's say you or somebody else right so that is the right. idea of showing you this picture there are many other statistical packages we are covering this spss but we have also covered during the and many of the workshop r and r studio also then i also give training on mini tab matlab also statistic also in fact i have mentioned many of the softwares here i give training on almost nine softwares right and uh, now people are also learning python i also now learning i'm also started learning python now if you know python then you don't require any one of these packages actually but python is difficult to understand in the sense python and r because you need a little bit of programming and but if you know a little bit of programming you can understand these languages right okay these are some of the references very important some some madam was asking about the categorical data analysis techniques so you can go through madam this book which is yes, by ellen ellen agrasti ellen agrasti's book on categorical data yes. analysis where different type of correlations different type of regressions are given how to handle the categorical data analysis i am teaching this subject on categorical data analysis to phd pre phd program in pre pre phd program okay, then sure. there is if you want to master yourself on techniques like linear statistical models correlation regression etc very important book on linear statistical models by bowerman and o connell this is an important book on bowerman and o connell okay i will suggest that each each and every one of you must go through this book on biostatistics why i am saying because some of you may not be from mathematical background and this doesn't have much of the mathematics there is a book by wayne w daniel and that book is on biostatistics wayne w daniel biostatistics book and some of the techniques some resource person will cover like factor analysis cluster analysis discriminant analysis logistic regression etc et which i will also cover anova one way two way etc they are also given in this book that is called marketing research by naresh k malhotra they are also given and uh, one of the book which i have written is on medical statistics if you want to learn something about meta analysis or analysis of variance and also covariance multivariate analysis of variance all these techniques counting statistics some basics are also given and some advanced topics mixed modeling etc they are also given they are given in this book on medical statistics by suresh k sharma you can also go through this book okay so thanks with this thanks the first session is over and we have to move on since there is uh, our i think uh, tea time is at 4:30 so we'll take 15 minutes more then we can have a tea break of half an hour so i'll start again at 4:45 and we will be able to finish maybe uh, not by 7 maybe before that will that be okay yes please yes sir yes sir yes, 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 or you yes, or you want or you brain are you want Minister, break four, time four, five. right now we can start at 4:30 it's up to you if you need a break here i can give you yes, break of half an hour this time and we can start at 4:30 or should i continue for another 15 minutes So when we started four thirty, then I can just revise the things that we studied. Uh, what about the others' opinion, please? Yes, sir. We have to ask the organizer. Okay. We have to ask the organizer. first of all. Um, I mean, uh, I mean, some some may think that we can we can uh, let's say I give you a break and somebody is not attending this, then he will join at five o'clock. Then it will be a big loss. Hopefully, all of you are here. Yes, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. जी सर यस सर दया शंकर जी बताइए आप जैसा कहेंगे हम वैसा करेंगे 15 मिनट्स खींचिए क्योंकि अगर कोई बाद में ज्वाइन करता है तो वो मिस कर जाएगा तो फिर ठीक है हम लोग कितने बजे शुरू करें बताइए 4:45 नहीं अभी कितने अभी चले 15 मिनट कर लें और यस मिनट सर कर सकते हैं सर इसको रिवाइज कर सकते हैं नहीं रिवाइज नहीं मैं अब नया टॉपिक आपका कोई क्वेश्चन है तो पूछिए यस प्लीज कोई क्वेश्चन है तो पूछिए प्लीज रिवाइज तो इसमें कुछ है नहीं जाना बेसिक चीजें थी If you need, I mean, if you want something else, please. No, sir. Thanks. अच्छा, चलिए. Um, 
दया शंकर जी ने बोला था कि मैं शेर भी सुनाता रहता हूँ और मैं एक शेर तो सबसे पहले हमेशा ही सुनाता हूँ कहो तो एक शेर सुना दें आपको सर एक नहीं सर दो तीन सुना दीजिए <laughs> <laughs> लीजिए साहब आगे फरमाइश चलिए सुनिए फिर एक शेर सुनिए कि खूबसूरत सा एक पल क्योंकि आपके साथ ये पल व्यतीत हो रहे हैं जो कि खूबसूरत होने जा रहे हैं खूबसूरत सा एक पल किस्सा बन जाता है ना जाने कौन कहा जिंदगी का हिस्सा बन जाता है कुछ खास लोग मिलते हैं जिंदगी में इस तरह जिनसे ना कभी बिछड़ने वाला रिश्ता बन जाता है वाह 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 सर लेकिन ना, लेकिन मेहनत इंसान को करते रहना चाहिए अगर ऊंची उड़ान भरनी है तो ये भी ध्यान में रखना चाहिए कि आसमान में उड़ने वाले पक्षी को भी मालूम होता है आसमान में उड़ने वाले पक्षी को भी मालूम होता है कि आसमान में बैठने की जगह नहीं होती है राइट एग्जैक्टली तो अगर ऊंची उड़ान भरनी है तो मेहनत करनी पड़ेगी और इसीलिए कहा गया है कि ख्वाब जिनके ऊंचे और मस्त होते हैं ख्वाब यानी कि ड्रीम्स ख्वाब जिनके ऊंचे और मस्त होते हैं इम्तिहान भी उनके जबरदस्त होते हैं तो इन सब चीजों का हम ध्यान रखेंगे और हम लोग पढ़ते भी रहेंगे और काम भी करते रहेंगे कि हमेशा ऊपर कभी ये मत सोचिए मैं छलांग मार के ऊपर पहुंच जाऊंगा कहता ऊपर उठने में वक्त तो लगता है ऊपर उठने में वक्त तो लगता है फिर चाहे वो सूरज हो चाहे वो सूरज ही क्यों ना हो वो भी धीरे धीरे निकलता है वो भी है उसको भी धीरे धीरे ही निकलना पड़ता है राइट तभी वो रोशनी दे पाता है तो हर चीज का वक्त वक्त होता है जिसके हिसाब से हम चलते हैं किसी ने सही कहा ना कि मैं रास्तों पर चलता नहीं हूं मैं रास्तों पर चलता नहीं हूं बल्कि जब मैं चलता हूं तो रास्ते खुद बखुद बन जाते हैं अपने आप ही बनते चले जाते हैं राइट राइट सर चलिए हम लोग अभी पंद्रह मिनट में अभी थोड़ा सा बेसिक्स ऑफ एस पी सीखेंगे एंड देन आई कंटिन्यू ओके सो अप टू सवा चार तक हम लेके जाते हैं फिर पौने पांच बजे हम लोग दूसरा सेशन शुरू करेंगे कैन यू सी माई स्क्रीन ये प्लीज सर so this is the logo for spss and basically this spss does not stand for statistical i mean people people call it statistical package for social sciences actually this is not the name of spss spss basically stands for stands for statistical product and service solutions the real name of spss is statistical product and service solutions that is the real name of spss and moreover SPSS. After 2009, the entire software has been procured by IBM. Now it's basically called IBM SPSS statistics. So when I'll open, it will be written IBM SPSS statistics. So if you want to quote somewhere, you will quote data analysis has been done by using IBM SPSS statistics, right? Okay, let me open it. So this this is the logo for SPSS. Just open and you will see. it will take 30 40 seconds to open just wait for a moment this is written ibm spss statistics press cancel here when this sign press cancel here and you will be at the screen of the spss can you see the screen yes please yes sir yes sir yes sir i think koi aisa mic on hai jisme piche se awaazein aa rahi hain i request please to mute yourself because kuch जैसे गाड़ियां चल रही होता है उसकी आवाज आ रही है शायद आप लोगों को भी आ रही हो ओके ऑल राइट नाउ दिस इज द स्क्रीन ऑफ एस पी एस एस इट इज जस्ट लाइक एक्सेल एंड इफ यू कंपेयर दिस विद एक्सेल इन एक्सेल हेयर यू हैव ए बी सी डी ए बी सी डी इन इन एस पी एस एस यू हैव वेरिएबल 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 वन डिफरेंस बट इफ यू सी द रो वाइज दिस इज रो वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सेम थिंग इज देयर इन excel but again the difference if you compare this with excel is here in excel you have sheet 1 sheet 2 sheet 3 on the left hand below corner but here if you look at the left hand below corner there are two views one is called data view another is called the variable view can you see that data view and variable view yes please yes sir hello yes sir yes sir yes sir data view and variable view okay okay 
Now, there are two ways to enter the data in SPSS. One is you can directly enter the data in SPSS. You can directly enter the data in SPSS. Another is you can import the data from some other file like Excel file. You can also import the data from Excel file. So I will teach you both ways how to enter the data manually. This is what you are doing in Excel also. And then we will also tell you how to import the data from some other file. OK, let's do something. Suppose I enter age data and age is given in, let's say, years. And uh, let's say I enter age data of the people. Let's say first person is 22 years, next person is 33 years, next is 54, something like. I'm just entering few values. Nothing special, but some values I'm entering. Right. So just entering few values. Okay. So I entered few values here, about 16 values I enter. Okay. It's not visible, so I can see. So I entered 15 values. Can you can you see all the 15? Yes, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So now you can see by default, two things have happened. One is I have not given any name, but SPSS has assigned one variable name, variable 00001. By itself, by default, it has taken. Right. Another important point to note is it has, I have not, I have simply written 22, 33, 54, 67, and so on. But by default, it has assigned two decimals. Can you see the two things? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, now, yes, sir. Actually, now how SPSS will come to know that these are a age, this is the age variable, right? This is the age variable. So what you can do, there is a data view, there is a variable view. You can go to the variable view and change the name from here. Your actual name is age. So let me write down age. And you come back to the data view. You can see the actual name is appearing. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Actual name has appeared, right? Actual name has appeared. That is age. Similarly, you can enter weight. Similarly, you can enter height. You can enter BMI. Now, what was the first figure which I entered? I entered 22, 33, etc. Once I started with any numeric variable, please listen to me carefully. Once I started with any numeric variable, 22, 33, SPSS automatically understand, SPSS automatically understand that this is a numeric variable. For example, there are types here. Now, what is the type of age? Yes, please. What is the type of age? Numeric. Yeah, I, I didn't give numeric. I just simply feed 22, 33, something like that. But once I start with any numeric value, SPSS automatically understand that this is a numeric variable and automatically take two decibels. Although whether I give decimals or not, but it will automatically take by default, it will take two decimals. If you don't require decimals, you can make these decimals zero also. You mark here and make this zero. You will be free from decimals. You come back to your data, it's free from decimals. But SPSS will, will always show you two decimals. Now, it, it doesn't mean that you cannot if data cannot be entered with more more decimals you can you can if there are 6 7 decimals you can enter your data no problem at all but only thing is if you see the front of the worksheet you will see the first two decimals data will be there data will be there let me let me say what i'm trying to say for example your data is 12.34567 okay now this is your data and I enter also here three, four decimals, three decimals. Now, you can, you can see the complete figure here. But when you see from here, it is only showing two decimals, three, four, five, six, seven, point two, three. But your actual data is this, which you can see. So no data is lost. You follow my point? Yes, please. Yes, sir. So no data is lost, even if you have nine ten decimals no problem at all okay so remember now it is not necessary that we always have to enter numeric value sometimes we are, have to enter name of the person sometimes the address of the person sometimes the employee code and so on so let's say i enter male and female 
that's a, this very first one is a male that's the second one is a female now you will hear a beep you can hear a beep just wait can you hear a beep hello have you heard some beep no no sir hello see it is not taking female i started with a male it is taking when i started with female you see it is not taking are you with me yes please yes Any, yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes sir yes yes sir hello yes sir it's clear yes, yes, sir. yes sir is there any connection yes, yes sir deya shankar ji koi connection to nahi chala gaya ji nahi sir sunpar nahi hai sir aapko hello ha sir offline mein hello sun rahe hain sir can anybody respond please so we can hear you yes 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 hum log sun pa rahe hain sir aapko can you put something in chat box so that i can understand can you put something into chat box are you listening to me you are not audible okay all right yes please am i audible now yes sir you are audible hello yes sir yes sir hello Am I audible yes, now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But you are audible. I am unable yes, to listen to you. Let me rejoin. Please, please be here. You If are... you are listening to me, I will rejoin. Sometimes it happens. I think connectivity issue. I will rejoin, and uh, then I will come back to you. Just wait for a moment, please. Okay, sir. Hello. Can you listen to me now? Yes. Yes. Yes, sir. I don't know yes, what sir. has happened, but there was some connectivity. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Anyhow. So that's why I rejoined without wasting time. It's better to. Oh. Just, just a minute. Let me just share the screen again. Just give me one minute. Can you see my desktop now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So we were here. If you remember, I what I was explaining you that if you start with a male, it it is taking male, but it is not taking female. You see, Ali, I am unable to enter. Why? The reason is here. Go to the variable view, and now what is the width of a string? What is the width of a numeric variable? Can anybody tell me what is the width of a numeric Eight. variable? Eight. But what is the width of a string variable? Four. four. That's why male is having four. four words, M A L E, but female is having six words. That's why it is not taking. But you have an option. You just click here, and you can increase this. You can also make this eight, and then come back to your data view. You can also make this eighty also. No problem. It's up to you. That's a, your address is quite long, so you can make this eighty, and you can write even three four lines. It doesn't matter. But suppose I make this eight and come back to the data view and you can see now you can enter female le now it is taking can you see that it is taking female now yes, yes please sir. yes sir now it is difficult to enter male and female male and female every time suppose i give you let's say 200 people where you have to every time you need to write down male female male female it's a very difficult job yes or no yes sir yes sir yes, but sir. i can always choose a code let's say code for one as male two as female Code is easier to enter, yes. 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 Sir. So suppose in next column I give male as code one, female as two. So in your data there may be some male, some female, something like this. This type of data you will be having. Now how SPSS will come to know that one is male and two is female? How SPSS? We haven't given any command that SPSS. How the SPSS will recognize that one is male and two is female? Very simple. you go to the variable view and this is called labeling variable so here is the values variable number 5 was there values under the values if you click here you see 
if you click here three dots will appear and you click these three dots a window will appear which is asking what is your value and what is your label so our value one value one was for mail for mail add and two was for yes two was for yes please email email, email. email. Add, email. Here. add here so one is male and two is female so you have given the proper label press ok and come back to the data view you can see one is replaced with male and two is replaced with female yes yes sir yes, yes sir and if i want to see what is the code of male and female so there is a this is called value label switch this switch is called value labels mm. okay so i click this you can see one and two click this one and two you can see now actually it has taken your data as numeric but once you assign labels although your data looks like as a string variable string variable means it's alphanumeric type of variable yes, but actually your data is numeric because you have written only one and two yes. so you can see from here your variable number five is numeric it's numeric right okay now coming back to the data view now do you think i i require variable number four yes please no no sir. no so if you don't if you do not require if you do not require any variable you click at the top here you click and then right click and press cut or delete it will be it will go out of the picture please remember you will not have to mark at the cell you have to mark at the top so that the entire column entire column becomes yellow so click this and you will be here uh, just give me one minute there is some urgent call please just Hi. one minute hello hmm. hello hmm. idea रेनू को कॉल कर लो मैं क्लास ले रहा हूँ एक्चुअली ना रेनू को कॉल कर लो हाँ रेनू एड्रेस बता देंगे हम हेलो यस प्लीज आई थिंक आई थिंक दया शंकर जी को बोलना पड़ेगा <laughs> दया शंकर जी दया शंकर जी हेलो I think he that is his voice. I can recognize. No, sir, it's so Oruk Basak, Oruk Baski. Huh? Yes, please. Sir, Oruk okay. Bas um, of Arup Bas. Uh, so okay. now uh, mute. Sir. Yeah, yeah, muted. Okay, thank you. Now, please, this variable number actually five, which we have created. is actually contains 1 and 2 1 and contains means it's a numeric variable you see this is a numeric variable but on the back on the back of this it's a string variable so if you see aspss will treat this as a numeric variable but actually it is a string variable that is the idea of giving this values value labels right so and if you go to the variable view you can change its name let's say i call this as gender and so one variable is age another is gender so after the break after the break now we will continue and i will join you after maybe uh, uh, 445 will that be okay yes please okay sir okay sir okay sir so okay, sir. madam uh, apna ye daya shankar ji daya shankar ji i think he is not there ha huh? so i think uh, daya shankar sir is not here yeah koi baat nahi uh, you can handle त्रिपाठी साहब कैसे हैं आप मैं सर हूँ पानी पीने गया था सर अच्छा देख लो फिर हमने पकड़ लिया आपको कि आप पानी पीने भी जा सकते हैं आ, क्या करें तो, तो फिर पानी चाय पानी तो अपनी करना पड़ता है तो फिर मेरे को फिर पानी पे भी एक शेर याद आ गया जी सर तो सुना ये सवाल पानी का नहीं प्यास का है सवाल पानी का नहीं प्यास का है सवाल मौत का नहीं सांस का है दोस्त तो दुनिया में बहुत है मगर सवाल दोस्ती का नहीं सवाल विश्वास का है 
जी सर बहुत अच्छा अभी हम लोग ब्रेक दे रहे हैं एंड आई विल बी एट फोर फोर्टी फाइव विद यू भी ओके सर ओके तो मैं इसको सर बंद कर दूं या दोबारा ज्वाइन कर लूंगा ठीक है